Hey everyone, today I wanna to share with you my updated photo editing workflow. So this is what I do to an image from beginning to end to get it ready to post online, to share it in my videos, to post on Instagram and to send to clients. So my current workflow includes using Lightroom and Lumina AI to edit my photos. So this video is sponsored by Lumina AI, but this has been my genuine workflow for the last six months or so. And a lot of the videos that you've seen on my channel recently have been edited using this process. So I thought I'd share it with you guys because I've been really enjoying using this and I want to share with you guys some new techniques that I found in Lumina AI that you can edit your portraits with. So jumping into Lightroom, this is a photo set. Uh, Dan took some portraits of me about a month ago when we had these beautiful autumn colors in Sydney and this was taken on the GM35 1.4. I like to use Lightroom to edit the colors of my photos. So for this one, I think I'm going to go with a Mouthy. It really suits like the warm tone of the autumn leaves and my jacket. The only thing I want to do here is bring down the exposure because it's a little bit too bright. And once I'm happy with the edit of the photo, all I do is I right click on the thumbnail and select edit in Lumina AI. And these are the settings that I like to use when I open it in Lumina AI. I have TIFF sRGB because I only post my photos online basically, 16 bits and 300 resolution and no compression. So this is what it looks like when you use Lumina AI as a plugin to Lightroom. It opens your individual photo in a new Lumina window. So the main thing that I like to focus on when I'm using Lumina as a plugin is the skin retouching. So I'm gonna zoom in to 100% on our photo here so we can see my face nice and close up. And I'm gonna go down to the portrait tools that we have and start with skin. So with the skin, I'm gonna bring the skin amount up. And as you can see, it's slowly gonna start smoothing out my skin, which I really like. So I usually like to keep it around, usually less than 50%. So around 40, I think looks really nice. I'm gonna zoom into the photo a little bit more. I'm gonna go to 200%. The next thing I wanna do is I do have a couple of like blemishes on my skin that I wanna remove. So I'm gonna use the erase tool for that. So I'm gonna select erase. And I'm gonna make my brush only as big as the blemish that I want to remove. And I'm gonna click over all the little spots here. And what I like about the erase tool is that you can do everything at the same time. So you just kind of click over everything that you wanna edit and then select erase and it will automatically get rid of it for you. So it's kind of like a clone stamp tool, but it just does it all in one go, which I really like. So that's cool. The last thing that I want to adjust in this photo in particular are my eye bags just here. They are quite dark. So something new that I've started using in Lumina AI is the clone tool. And I'm just going to use my tablet to be able to use this. You can use your mouse, but I do feel like I have more control over the pen with a physical pen tool rather than a mouse. So I'm going to zoom in to 200% again, just so we can really see what we're doing and I'm gonna select the clone tool. And the first thing that pops up is click to set the source. So I'm gonna select from this area here because that's where the clone tool is going to sample from as you're painting over areas of the photo. So I like to bring the opacity super low. So I'm gonna have it at about 10%. And I'm also going to make my brush nice and small. And I'm just gonna start brushing over my eye bags here. And once I'm happy with what that's looking like, I'll hold down the Alt or Option key to select a new source for the clone tool to sample from and just continue brushing really slowly. The reason I like using it at 10% is that I always like to do very minimal edits to my photo. I don't want it to look too obvious. So I find that having it at a low opacity helps you blend it out easier. I'm gonna zoom back out and here is the before and here is the after. So I look like I got a full night's rest. <laughs> Once I select apply, it's going to process the image and then open it back up in Lightroom with all the edits that we've done in Lumina. So this is the original photo straight out of the camera. This is what it looks like with the Lightroom preset applied. And this is what it looks like with the skin edits we did in Lumina AI. And that's what I would call a finished photo that is ready to post online. So as you can see, using Lumina AI turns photo editing into a very easy and quick process. So I've been really enjoying 
considering using that. I also wanted to mention that I understand it's not really feasible to, for some people to have more than one software, especially with Lightroom and Adobe products. They are subscription based compared to Lumina AI, which is just a one time payment and you get to just use that software without having to pay for it again. So I do want to show you guys how you can edit a photo to look exactly the same as what we just did, but only using Lumina AI. Also, we have a little guest. <laughs> hey. So she's distracting me. So now I've opened Lumina AI as a standalone software and I've imported all the photos from this set into my catalog by pressing the plus button, add folder, and then I selected the folder that had these photos. So I'm gonna start off by editing this photo because I'm actually looking at the camera this time. And I'm gonna start off by going into templates. And here I usually like the close-up quick portrait solution templates. The brush up one is really nice because it already has some skin retouching applied. If I show you a before and after. It's also just really bright and airy, which I really like and a little bit saturated as well. So I'm gonna use that as the base for our edit. Then I'm gonna head into our edit panel. If you wanna edit a photo completely from scratch, you do have all the tools that we're used to seeing in Lightroom, also in Luminar AI. We have temperature, exposure, highlight shadows. We have our tone curves, including RGB curves. I find that I don't usually need all of these tools though, because I personally really, really love using the Enhance AI, so I'm gonna turn it down to zero. But basically what it does is balances out the shadows and the highlights in your photo. So by bringing it up, you can see it slowly start to balance things out. So the image in the lower left-hand corner where it's very dark before, is a lot brighter and the areas on this side where it's very bright start to get darker. So you have a nice balanced image without having to individually adjust your shadows, highlights, blacks and whites. So yeah, I really like using the accent tool and I usually have it at about 50 to 60, I have it quite high. So next we're gonna go down into our portrait tools again and open Skin AI. So I do wanna adjust a little bit, make it a little bit higher. The GM35 is a very sharp lens, so it kind of captures all the texture and details of someone's skin, but I think that looks nice uh, at about 44%. The next step in my process is to go back to our erase tool. I'm gonna select on that and just brush over all these little blemishes that I have. And I'm gonna select erase. So yeah, it's super easy to remove like little blemishes on a face. Next, I'm gonna go back into the clone tool because again, my eye bags, they're just hereditary, are a little bit dark, so I wanna lighten them up a little. And I'm gonna sample just here from the lighter part of my face. And again, I'm gonna use my tablet to just retouch them out. I like using the square bracket tool to make the brush smaller and bigger as well. I love using shortcuts. And I'm gonna bring the opacity back down to about 10. And then the other part I wanted to just fix up a little bit is there's a bit of a shadow just here above my eyebrows. I'm gonna sample from the brighter part of my forehead and just brush over that area very softly and just this here. So here's a before and after example of what that looks like. And this is just an example of how you can be more meticulous and involved with your editing process if you want to be with Lumina AI. But you do also have the option of going into the uh, face and opening eyes and here you've also got the dark circle removals tool as well so you can use that to also enhance the under eyes of an eye and then another tool that i want to share with you guys which i have showed you in other lumina ai videos but i really like it especially for myself because i have very dark eyes i love using the iris flare tool to just bring in some light into my eyes and just make them more prominent in the photo so if I bring it up nice and high, it adds a nice little reflection at the bottom of the iris, which is really cool. So I just bring it up a bit so it's kind of visible, but not too much. And it just adds a bit of sparkle. So I really like that. And the last thing I wanna show you guys to make this edit look the same as the last edit we did in Lightroom is to go into mood. And here you can choose a LUT to color your photo with. So you can choose from the pre-made LUTs that Luminar AI already has inbuilt into the program. But for this, I am going to load one of my custom LUT files. I have a LUT called Positano, which was inspired by my Amalfi Lightroom preset, which we use to edit video with. So I'm gonna apply that to this photo and I'm gonna bring the amount up so it's more 
prominent in the image. I like that you can choose the opacity of a LUT file that you place on a photo. So I'm gonna bring it up quite high, but I am gonna bring the contrast down a little. And there we have our final image that was edited completely in Luminar AI. And I'll put the Lightroom and Luminar photo and this only Luminar photo up side by side so you guys can see that they look pretty much the same, even though they were edited slightly differently. So yeah, I'm really happy with what this photo looks like. There is one more thing that I wanted to show you guys, which is the dodge and burn tool, which I really like when it comes to editing photos taken in bright sunlight like this. As you can see, my hair here is almost on the verge of being overexposed. So I'm gonna use the dodge and burn tool to just balance that out. So I'm gonna select it to be on darken and I'm gonna have the strength be again, very low at about 10. And I'm gonna bring the brush up so it's nice and big and just brush over this light part of my hair. I'm gonna brush over it a couple of times. I am also gonna click over this bokeh which is slightly overexposed as well. And then I'm gonna bring the overall amount down slightly to blend it into the photo. And as you can see, that's just balanced out the photo even more. So this is without the dodge and burn tool and this is with the dodge and burn tool. One more thing I wanted to show you guys since we do have a whole set of photos that we took on this day is how to sync your edits to other images. So I have this photo that we just edited selected and I'm gonna press on some of the other photos that we took right click adjustments and sync adjustments. And this is going to bring over any edits that we did on our first photo to the other photos. Something I really like about this is that when you go back into edit, things like the skin AI tool, the skin retouching, the face AI tool with the iris visibility and the flare and things like that carries over from image to image. So you don't need to like do that every single time you edit a photo. The only thing that doesn't carry across is the individual erase tool and the individual clone and dodge and burn tool as well, since that's specific to the photo that you were editing. But yeah, I find it really handy to be able to sync edits like that. And then I can, for this photo in particular, I'll just bring down the exposure a little bit. So here's a before and after of another photo that I synced the edits to. Yeah, it just looks really nice. And again, it's just super quick to edit a whole set of images. So that is my updated photo editing workflow that I've been using recently. So the majority of the photos that you've been seeing in my videos recently have been edited with Lightroom colors and then skin retouching in Lumina AI, including the last video that I just uploaded a few days ago of the 85 versus 85 millimeter lens comparison. I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you have any questions about anything, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you guys. And also if you wanted to try out Lumina AI for yourself, I do also have a $10 discount code for Lumina AI, which I'll leave linked in my description below. But thank you guys so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I will see you all next time. Bye.